Hello it's Alex, welcome to my channel and thank you for joining me today for, well I don't think it is Friday so I'm not sure what day you're going to get this video because my Wi-Fi has gone down, my broadband has gone down so I can't upload anything to YouTube as soon as I can, this will be there. Uh, but yeah, I just it's probably been a couple of weeks since I last made a video and I wanted to update you on what I've been doing. Um, here in the UK it has been absolutely boiling hot, I mean yeah, we're now moaning that it's too hot instead of our usual story of moaning it's too cold and rainy. Um, but what it's meant for me is that my sewing room is at the top of the house and it's even with the fan and the windows open by mid-afternoon it's just too hot to sit in there. So I've been looking for something nice and quick and easy and sort of weather appropriate to sew and I was reminded of this top that I did some pattern testing for and it's the egret top from the sewing revival. There will be a link in the description box below and that will be an affiliate link so I get a small percentage of any pattern sales, it doesn't cost you anymore. Um, yeah so I think it came out a couple of years ago and at the time it was only sleeveless. There has now been a dolman sleeve option and it is both a top which is what I've made and also a dress. And I've been wanting to make the dress for summer, um, yeah, pretty much ever since it came out. I think it was possibly winter when I did the pattern testing. Um, because it's so quick and easy to sew, but what I really love about it is this gathered neck detail. Um, it's super easy, it's done with casing and elastic. So you can make it as close to the neck or as wide if you're not someone that likes that, um, you know, that feeling around your neck. Um, it's, yeah, pretty much two uh, pattern pieces, the front and the back. You can either bind the armholes with bias binding or there is a facing piece if you want to do that, which is the route I went down because I don't like bias binding. If I can avoid it, I do. Um, so I got a bit carried away. I made a dolman sleeve one out of a cotton fabric, um, which is probably towards the heavier end of the kind of fabric you want to use with this. It's obviously designed for something nice and lightweight and drapey. Uh, this is a cheap and cheerful um, poly crepe that I got from Abacan. Um, and do you know what? I've avoided wearing it in the summer because of it being poly, but actually it's really nice to wear it light. Um, if it's quite hot today again. But yeah, so I made this dolman sleeve one, I'll go pop it on in a minute, out of this cotton block print fabric that I attempted to buy from uh, Dorata Davis. She was doing an Instagram de-stash and she very kindly gave it to me. She wouldn't take any money for it, which was very sweet of her. Um, yeah, really generous. Um, but I made, I really like this block print, been wanting to try some out. So I made a dolman sleeve version and I timed myself. It took me exactly an hour. That was from cutting out, it didn't include the cutting out. So from the point of cutting it out to literally the hem going on, on the hanger, ready to go, was an hour. And uh, in this heat, I don't think you can say fairer than that. So I put it on in a sec, but then I got a bit carried away because I thought the top really doesn't take very much fabric at all. And I have two remnants left over from my stitch bird dresses. I also coincidentally, the uh, sewing revival, um, I made a black one and a sort of teal one using that really beautiful Nanny Iro fabric. And in both cases, I had about 60 centimeters of it left. And if you remember, it, I was using it on the cross grain. <laughs> I can't remember which way around that is. Uh, yeah, I was using it on the cross grain. And I thought to myself, the pattern piece for this, for the neck, is only slightly higher at the neckline. And I wonder whether I could do a reversible, is it reversible? Well, I could, one that I can wear either way around using the leftover fabric. And that is what I've made. So I've got the teal on one side and the black on the other. And what I did was I just used the same front pattern piece for both front and back. So again, I'll pop it on in a sec and you can see what you think. But I personally don't think that you can tell that the back piece should be the front. That the back piece should be the back piece, but in fact, it's a front piece. I hope that makes sense. 
Um, but I just thought, because it was such nice fabric, and this is a tensile, Japanese tensile fabric, and it's so lovely to wear. And it was just that sort of funny size piece, you know, where you think it's too big to just chuck away. Who would chuck that away? Um, and it's not cheap. Too big to throw away. Um, don't want to just make a face mask out of it. That would be really dull. Um, yeah, what could I make? So I'm really pretty pleased with myself. I did do the facings again on this. In fact, well, before I put it on, let me show you your facings on the inside. So you just understitch the facing and then, yes, it's loose, but the understitching helps it stay inside. And then I also just stitched in the ditch on the shoulder seam and the underarm seam. And when I've, wear, when I've worn it, um, those facings are not attempting to escape. It's the same with this one. The facing is loose and it's not poking out at all. So that's really good. Um, so yeah, I'll pop them on and you can see what you think. So that's the Dolman version. If I do get a little bit of, um, you know, excess fabric under the arm, I don't think you really kind of notice it or see it as a problem because your eye is drawn to the gathered neck detail, which by the way, isn't just um, elastic in a casing. It has got like a little sort of one centimetre, um, well, it's almost like a frill on the top, but it's not frilly. Um, but yeah, look at the line drawings for it. So I really like this. This is obviously not as drapey as that poly crepe or as the tensile version is going to be. But again, an hour, an hour to make a top. And to be honest, if I'd made the dress version, it really wouldn't take very much more, would it? Because it's only a couple of longer seams to deal with. Um, I think I definitely, definitely want to make the dress. Um, I just got sidetracked by my brilliant idea um, but I think if I made the dress I would be tempted I'm not a fan of a tie belt I'll be honest um, I think I would be tempted to just put an elastic casing in because I quite like that I quite like it where you lift the elastic casing up a little bit higher and then create a bit of a billow um, a billowy effect around the waist so I think I would be tempted to do that and I'm gonna go and have a look at my stash and see what I can make another one from, because yeah, super quick and easy. Um, let me show you my double-sided one. Okay, so this is this way around. I did have to take, I think about two, two and a half centimeters, so about an inch off the length, just to get it out of the fabric I had, just for one of the sides. Um, but I don't really think that's a problem. I still feel, I don't feel it looks particularly cropped. Um, and yeah, I really like how it looks. And then you've got the black on the back, possibly because I've got all of this hair, it's covering up the neck anyway, but I really don't feel, so let's move it out of the way. I don't feel that this looks like I've got the wrong pattern piece. Um, so yeah, as I say, both the front and the back, I've just used the front pattern piece for, so it's, the one that's slightly lower around the neckline. But yeah, I really love this gathered neckline. Um, and I remember when uh, Janine first asked me to test it, I remember my initial reaction was like, oh, sleeveless. Um, don't really like having my arms out. And I, I know for a fact I'm not the only woman in the world who's not comfortable having her arms out. But I really like the shape of it. I'm not quite, yeah. I'm obviously not a pattern cutter. I'm not quite sure what she's done, but actually I don't really mind this having my arms out. Um, and there's a part of me that just thinks, who cares anyway, to be honest. You know, so what? My arms are not slim and toned, whatever. Okay, and there I am again. Um, so for, I'm really pleased. I feel like it's been a nice little um, unintentional scrap buster. Cause yeah, really I was testing out the dolman sleeve with a view to making a dress, and then I, I kind of went down this road. But yeah, this um, black Japanese tensile fabric has been sitting on the shelf since I made that stitch bird dress last summer. Um, so, so much better that I can actually use it now. Yeah, it's quite a bit pleased with myself with this find. Um, and these, by the way, are the um, Sidewinder pants they're called, which is also a sewing revival one. You can't see it because they're black, but they're the ones that have the seam that slightly spins round. And I actually made these when I was slimmer 
um, but because they have an elasticated waist at the back, um, and also I've made them from linen, so that always has a bit of give, I can still just about <laughs> squeeze myself in. So yeah, that's what I've been doing in the last little while. It's a really nice pattern, so um, yeah, good for quick and easy. The other thing that I have been doing is that I started making, well, I've made two bags. One is a crochet bag, so it's not really a sewing thing. Yeah, I really like my little crochet bag. Um, ever since I made the uh, crochet cardigan with Jen Leg, what's her name? I can't remember what her name is on Instagram, uh, but she was on the sewing bee a couple of seasons ago and she did a crochet online thing. And I've really been enjoying crocheting in the evenings. So I made a blanket for my daughter when she moved house and I was looking for something else to do because I literally only know how to make a granny square. The pattern is from a lady called, I think she's called Stephanie. She has a YouTube channel which is called All About Ami. And uh, yeah, I mean, I use University of YouTube to teach myself how to do this. This is called a Wild Rose um, Shopper shoulder bag something like that um but more importantly i've been sewing a bag as well and this was a few weeks ago i made that skirt from i know it's called the anzu skirt completely forgotten the name of the pattern company but it was the one that had like a, a pocket come back that you popped on and popped off and i use it all the time uh, especially for dog walking to be honest um and I mentioned then that I had seen some bag sewing patterns from a company called Spencer Og. She also has a YouTube channel. And uh, the lady who runs that, who's called Diane, got in touch and asked if I would like one of her patterns. So I said, yes, please, thank you very much, because I'd had my beady eye on this bag and it's called the Inner Circle Bag. What I like about it is it's got a 90s kind of vibe to it. And this shape of bag is really on trend at the moment. I've been considering buying one. Um, so I thought, yeah, why not make one? So I haven't got a finished thing yet. I just did a little tester and I used the fabric. I had a little bit of leftover fabric from my linen trousers and it's not designed for fabrics as lightweight as linen, but I thought it would be okay because this was so I suppose it's called a toile when it's for bags, is it? But it's like doing a toile. I just wanted to do a bit of a tester um, and I haven't finished it. And the reason I haven't finished it is because I used for the lining this um, daffodil fabric, which to be honest, doesn't go with the outer fabric at all because as I say, it was just a tester. Um, you see what I mean? I mean, it's okay if it's just on the inside um, but I think what I hadn't really twigged, I don't know why, because I wasn't thinking properly, too hot in that sewing room. Um, what I hadn't really twigged was that the lining on the bag strap would show up here. Um, and I just think that looks a bit ugly. So I'm not going to finish it, but uh, I am going to get some vinyl and, or some faux leather um, and make the real thing. It gives you the idea of the sort of shape. Uh, but the reason I wanted to mention it is that it, her instructions are really good. So if you were thinking of making a bag at all, um, go and check her out because she has all sorts of patterns, lots and lots of patterns. And my problem when I kind of first looked into making some bags was I didn't really find too many bag patterns that I liked the look of but she actually has a really good selection. Um, but her instructions were fabulous. And with this pattern, there is also a link, when you get the pattern, there's a link that takes you through to a tutorial that literally walks you through it step by step. She explains it really nice and clearly. Um, yeah, step by step, it's brilliant. Absolutely fantastic. So if you were thinking of making something other than clothes, or you just fancied a different kind of project. I can really, I mean, yes, she gave me the pattern for free, but hopefully you trust me to know, I wouldn't say this if it was anything but true. I really recommend going and checking her out. So um, that's something I'm gonna do next, is make a vinyl version, which, yeah, I'm a little bit nervous about, because vinyls can be a bit tricky, but it's nice to have a challenge.
The other thing that I wanted to tell you about is a new pattern and it's from Pattern Emporium who are based in Australia. Um, it's winter over in Australia. So you may have seen other people talking about, it's the, about it. It's the With Love Poncho. I really think that for those of us that are on this side of the world where the weather's really hot, um, it's worth having a look at and definitely not dismissing as a winter pattern. Um, the high, it comes, as always with Pattern Emporium, lots of different versions. Um, the high-low version looks fantastic. I'll put a picture up. Um, I am definitely, definitely going to make one of those when it does get to autumn, winter. Um, it's designed for knits, so some of those really nice sweater knits or a ponty even. Um, my beloved faux angora would look great in it. Um, but yeah, definitely going to do it for winter. But there's also a variation with a, I think it's called a t-shirt neckline and a slightly lower one. So kind of, yeah, a round neck and just a slightly, um, not as far as a scoop, but anyway, another ne neckline. And you can make it so that it is a bit like a loose drapey t-shirt because you can either leave the sides open or you can sew them up. So if you sew them up, it becomes more like a drapey t-shirt. If you were lucky enough to go away on holiday anywhere, I would seriously, well, even regardless of holiday, what I was thinking is you could just lengthen it and make it like a summer dress. Um, so certainly great as a beach cover up, you know, over a bikini. When did I last wear a bikini? Swimsuit. Um, or, you know, anything like that it would look fabulous. But also if you just made it in a linen for hot days, for just sort of wafting around in the garden, a dress version of it would be great. And you just sew up the sides. You probably have to add some length to it, obviously. But you just sew up the sides. You could even sort of, you know, give yourself a bit of a split at the side. I actually just think it's a really versatile pattern and not to be dismissed as a winter only pattern so wanted to mention that because that's definitely on my radar i'm definitely going to make one of those um for this warmer weather and then do you know even just for sort of mooching around in the evening we've got um we've got leather sofas and you know that awful thing you know we have bare legs on a leather sofa and it's hot and sticky it doesn't feel very nice does it so um i was thinking just to make one in a light floaty fabric just for wafting around in because of course as you can imagine I'm always very glamorous of an evening uh, and the other thing that I want to mention is I'm going to have a little bit of a break I think lots of us over the summer don't do as much sewing and people are busy going away on holiday and all the rest of it and I'm just finding that there are a few other things I want to get done and I'm not having the time for and as I'm saying my sewing room is ridiculously hot um, it's my youngest child will, fingers crossed, be going to university in September. So that's it. This will be my last summer of having kids at home uh, because the oldest had to defer from uni. So she's here at the moment as well. And I just feel like I'd like to spend this last summer concentrating on family. There's a few other things I want to do. I'd like to do some gardening, some things I want to learn. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to take a bit of a YouTube break. I definitely, definitely will be back. But I'm going to see it a little bit like the school holidays in the UK, which are normally about six weeks. So early September, first week of September, something like that, I will definitely be back. Um, it's not to say that I won't be around. I may well be loitering over on Instagram. I'm also going to take a, a similar length break from Clubhouse. And I have uh, suggested to the people over on, or the ladies, we are all ladies, over on Clubhouse that if someone else wants to carry on over the summer, that would be great. Um, but I do think summer in general is a bit quiet, so that may go quiet over the summer as well. And I've no doubt I'll be doing bits and pieces of sewing as well. Definitely want to make this bag, that's for sure. And before I go, there was just one other thing I wanted to talk to you about, and that is a new challenge that's coming up in September. It's called Funderwear, um, and it's all about raising money for a UK cervical cancer charity. I think they're called Joe's Cervical Cancer. I'll put a title. Um, but raising money, and they are in turn all about raising awareness because 
One of the problems that's been happening here in the UK, and I am sure it's happening worldwide, is that because of COVID, some of these more kind of mundane checks, that medical checks that we all ought to be doing are going by the wayside and women are not taking up their appointments to go and get their smear tests done, um, which means that potentially there are cervical cancers going undetected and it's one of those cancers that you want to try and get early. Um, so the idea is it's being set up by uh, Lara who is another service up here in the northwest. Lara's been to lots of our uh, northwest meetups and things. She's lovely. She's on Instagram as So Meadow and she's doing it in conjunction with somebody she knows who's called Julie from a place called The Threadmill in Hayfield, which is also up in this part of the world. Um, and I believe that her place uh, does workshops and sewing kind of events. So what they're going to do is anyone can take part. It's over the month of September. And the idea is that we all sew knickers or undies. And um, we do it sort of together as a community. Ideally, if you can host an event and people come together actually in real life, can you imagine how lovely that would be? Um, so you come together in a church hall or in someone's home or something like that. I know that the Threadmill are going to be doing some events and I think there may be events dotted around. Um, and rather than perhaps paying some money to attend, you donate some money to the charity and you sew some knickers. There are a couple of free uh, patterns that they've got access to. They've got a really good website that um, gives you all the information. But I thought I'd mention it now because if you were thinking of putting an event on, it would be, you know, it might take a little bit of time to organise. And I also thought that I know lots of you aren't based here in the UK, but I feel sure that you've got uh, charities wherever you are that are promoting um, cervical cancer and all the awareness around it and making sure that people go and take those appointments up because I have no doubt it is a, a bit of an international issue and um, so everyone can join in. We've talked about it a little bit on Clubhouse and we're thinking of doing a Zoom because we would love to all get together um, but trying to do that in person is not going to be easy. Everybody's scattered throughout so we're thinking we will do a Zoom I don't yet know what the date will be, but it'll be some kind of date in September where we can come together for a few hours and sew and then sort of pop on the Zoom and have chats and yeah, raise a little bit of money and have a little bit of fun at the same time. So keep your eyes open for any local events that you might be able to attend or um, obviously we've got the online Zooms as well. So yeah, that's me for the next few weeks. I'm going to enjoy spending some time doing some other things. One of the things I really fancy doing is learning Adobe Illustrator. I've got a bit of a yen to design some fabrics and I, I don't know whether that will turn into anything or not, um, but I feel like I need to learn Adobe Illustrator in order to do that. So if anyone's got any top tips for good classes, I was thinking maybe a Skillshare class or I'm not quite sure which way to go. I haven't investigated yet. So if anyone's got any good resources for that please let me know in the comments below and if you hit the subscribe button then you'll know when I'm back in September but in the meantime yeah please everyone have a lovely time over the summer and stay safe while we've still got this awful awful blooming pandemic going on and I hope to see you all in the summer where we can start getting excited about the autumn okay see you then bye bye